So this is Julia Lyne Weber. I'm sorry, my, my language skills are absolutely atrocious, Julia. You can say it right yourself. And she's been a midwife for many years, both in Germany and in Australia. And her particular interest now is in birth trauma and its effect on midwives. So welcome, Julia, and please take the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Linda, for the introduction and um, welcome everybody to this presentation. Um, it's very exciting to see midwives from so many countries um, being interested in the topic. topic. So um, I just start by giving you um, a uh, just short background um, about uh, the topic and um, also about the study I did. So um, as Linda introduced, uh, said in the introduction, my um, I, I was interested in researching um, the effects of witnessing birth trauma. So about um, and and one way to uh, think about the effect is to think that midwives themselves actually become traumatized and develop what is referred to as a as post traumatic stress. So just just so as a background here, so post traumatic stress that uh, has three classic symptoms that is re-experiencing, avoidance and arousal symptoms. And if that is really bad, then it becomes a post-traumatic stress disorder. So there has been some research that shows that when midwives witness uh, that sort of uh, birth trauma, that they can develop symptoms of post-traumatic stress. However, um, we do not know a lot about how uh, what, what constitutes risk factors which what makes midwives more likely to develop that sort of stress and maybe just um on the uh, just some uh, info on the uh, practical implications just if you imagine the symptoms re-experiencing re avoidance and arousal um in clinical pra practice just um you know so to, just to explain the significance of the topic it just makes your life as a midwife pretty much uh, hard if you uh, are having have experienced have witnessed a trauma and it does affect you and you are whilst you in the following days weeks or for some years you are affected you just have you re-experienced that that terrible event uh, you try to avoid maybe the place where it happened maybe that special room where the uh, birth took place and uh, whenever there is a little reminder you get like uh, your heart um, rate just speeds up so, so that's how it looks in practice it's very unpleasant and yeah if it's if it goes on it can really make you make you sick um so um what, what I did, um, I just asked midwives about uh, if they've ever witnessed trauma and then asked them, asked them about uh, symptoms of post-traumatic stress. And this is just um, so, so as a background to uh, before I move on to talk about professional autonomy and uh, traumatic stress. So what I found in my studies, study um, which uh, took place in Australia um, in which uh, I, I asked, I just uh, did an online survey and asked midwives who were interested in the topic. Uh, midwives who were registered with the Australian College of Midwives, and I had big response. So it, I, all the way through my research, I had the impression midwives are really interested in the topic of traumatic stress. Um, so, and what I found in this sample is that quite a, a lot of midwives have symptoms of post-traumatic stress. And then if we use like this working definition of probable PTSD, like also very likely to have that stress disorder, um, I, that in my study was um, up to 17 or 17%. So that is significant. That's almost one fifth of midwives. So is a topic that uh, is relevant for midwives in, in their daily practice. And just from this study and also from studies done in the UK and the USA, we know that there are many midwives out there practicing who are actually battling with symptoms of traumatic stress. So when I then investigated uh, possible risk factors, of course I looked what what has been done in other um, in other related um, neighboring disciplines. How, how what are risk factors for post traumatic stress in general? And then maybe there's some research done with ambulance uh, people who work um, as ambulance personnel. So what is their risk when they watch terrible events? How does it? What risk factors make them more likely to develop post traumatic stress? And I just so this is still the background. Just came up with this model. Um, 
say that there's lots of there's lots of reasons there's lots of factors that uh, also inter interact with each other there's basically factors that have to do with the midwife herself it's her own history uh, also her own personal uh, her own personality um, then there is an important factor uh, factor is um, things related to the birth trauma itself what type of trauma did they witness how was their immediate reaction to that and then there's factors that have to do with the wider environment. So that has to do with the way uh, the work is organized there. And this is this area, the wider environment, and in particular the um, how work is organized, the job, how, what are the demands midwives are experiencing, and how much control do they have over how they do their work. This is the area that this presentation um, will look into. So um, just like having these three, we know that these three factors are in affecting the trauma risk, and um, the environmental factor is something that uh, is is interesting in reference to um, professional autonomy in midwives. So I just want to stop here and just ask you: Is there any questions so far to that? Anything you want to want to know a bit a uh, bit better before I can go on and talk about the. Uh, job control and job demands in regards to traumatic stress. Okay. Okay. Um, I just keep going then and uh, you interrupt me if there's any um, any questions in between. So the demand control model is is a model that has been widely used to assess occupational stress. So it's been developed, um, I think, in the 1980s, and it's been tested in a lot of occupations, and there's the, and it has been validated. So there's definitely there is something uh, to it. So we know that the psycho psychosocial work environment influences um, the health of employees, and we also know that how employees perceive the demands um, of the work they're doing and the extent they can make their own decisions, that these two factors interact with each other. And from just asking people about those two domains, we can then predict how well do they cope with occupational stress. And as you see, when I talk about occupational stress, so traumatic stress can just be considered as a form of occupational stress. It is a stress that midwives are confronted with as part of doing their job. So when we look at the model, um, we see uh, it assesses, it's about two dimensions, so it's about job control. Um, and I'll refer to this uh, as decision authority later. So job control, how much control do I have and what demands am I experiencing? And as I said, this, this you can um, apply to a variety of uh, uh, work situations. Uh, has also, it has been uh, used in nursing quite a bit, but so far I think midwives have not really worked with that model, which I think is a shame because it has a lot to offer. So what we see here is um, if we have a job in general that gives us a low amount of control, here up here, so low control, but Meanwhile, has lots of uh, demands, and here more specifically we can talk about psychological demands. Then we'll end up in this part of the of the so in the in the high strain job um, quarter of the model. So low control over what you're doing in your work, low decision making authority, combined with lots of demands result in a job that is very stressful or in the model they call it a high strain job. So that's that's important information and I think you know those of you who've worked across uh, different uh, areas they could probably if you look in your own experience yeah you can um, maybe relate to that. Uh, it doesn't always mean job dem high demands in a job doesn't always mean that the job that you get um, high strain. So when you experience high demands, um, but you also have a lot of control over how you exactly manage these demands, um, you have a lot of say about how you do your job and what you do, 
then you don't have a high strain job, but you have, have what is referred to as an active job. And active jobs are associated with positive outcomes, with um, satisfaction, uh, with job satisfaction, and uh, with positive health outcomes. So since um, the demand side of midwifery, we cannot change that much. So midwifery is clearly a very demanding profession, and particular their psychological um, their psychological de demands on midwives. Um, but um, the control side, the other variable, this is something that has to do with the models of care midwives are working in. So there's models of care where midwives have very low job control. Um, then there's some where they have a bit of job control. And then there's models of care where midwives have high job control. And then this then um, combined with the demands determines whether the midwife is experiencing a high strain job or like rather an active job. So that's the demand control model. Any questions? Is this? Okay, I just keep going then. Talking about the, um, keeping it, keep, I keep talking about the job control. Um, as I said, you can use the, the term workplace decision authority. Um, this is how it's measured in the questionnaire that uh, is used, the job content questionnaire. And it basically, as I said, the influence over what to do and how to do it. In midwives, we can make the equation that job control is decision authority and that equals professional autonomy. And then you could, I guess, we developed a model could say the, all of these factors are really influenced by the model of care midwives are working in. Oopsie, sorry, I'm just go back. Okay, so, so uh, in my study, I used the uh, that questionnaire. It's called the job content questionnaire, and I used the decision authority subscale to um, find out how how do midwives perceive their um, decision uh, authority. And the good thing about it is, it's really quite short. It's only three questions. And now, um, which just um, then when you um, analyze it, so it gives you quite a, a valid and quite a reli reliable answer about the degree of um, of uh, decision authority, so of professional autonomy um, people have. So it's it's a, it's a quite a valid a tool that has been has been tested. And now I would really like it if that poll would come in too. And if um, actually you could just answer these three questions in regards to your current job. So just um, don't think too much about it. Just just give a spontaneous answer. Is that possible, Linda? Julia, I, yep, Julia, I had to do the three questions as three different, the three questions separately, okay? Because there's no way to do all of those in sure, our no polls. Worries. Yep. And so I'll do them in um, questions. Da, 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 da. So and if I you're don't. not currently working as a midwife, because there might be educators just think of the last job you're holding as a in clinical practice. So in in your last job, um, did your job allow you to make a lot of decisions on your own? So yeah, and then go through the um, Anybody else going to answer this one? You can do a no vote as well. Or a no vote job. Uh, everybody finish that one? A couple more. Okay, I'm going to end that poll then. Uh, the next one was, uh, in my job I had very little freedom. There we go. Okie dokie. Any more? Just a few more still. 
happy with us. Where's the rest of the 48 of you? Maybe you don't work as midwives. That's always a possibility too. <laughs> Any more? Three, two, one. Is that long enough, Julia? Yep, I think it's long enough. Yep. Still more coming in. Last but, one. Uh, so they're all kind one. of trying to tap in the same concept, really. So so just the last one, just a different way of um, asking it. But yeah, just, just um, uh, um, please answer the last one. For me, I had a lot of say about what happened in my job. So either in your current job or in your in the last job you did, you worked as a midwife in clinical practice. Mm. I had a lot of say. Do you agree to that, or would you rather not have a, have a lot of say? Okay, I think people are learning how to do polls just now. <laughs> That's good. So this just gives you a bit of an idea, you know, what, what is the concept of decision authority um, about? And it's quite telling, even though the questions are very general, but, you know, from the answers you can normally tell, um, yeah, how people, how that uh, area of uh, people's work life looks like. And um, so I did, I asked that uh, the midwives in my study, and I just show you what, uh, how they answered it. Ah, doesn't want to do it. This keeps flipping away. Let's try one more time. Hmm. Sometimes um, Adobe will not um, allow something to go. be put on top of the original slide. You know, the, the transitions don't work very well. So maybe, do you have it in front of you? You can yeah, tell yeah. us what the... the, the, the yeah, button. it's there. No, you should, see it. you should see it now. You should see the slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Decision Authority in, in Australian Midwives. It should be there now. Um, so what, what you see is, um, you know, obviously, so a low score is um, low levels of decision authority and the higher score is high levels of decision authority. And this is how it was distributed just in my sample. So so the medium, um, so the highest what you could get was 12. I don't know why this is showing 2.5 and 12.5. So just ignore, just move it a bit to the left. So it's two, no, it goes, so 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 yeah, it's the highest is 12, really. Um, but what it shows us, the medium here is um, around a 7.5. And um, but there is a bit of edge. There is quite there is quite a few midwives who really have very low decision authority, who answer these questions really like saying, "Look, I don't have a lot of say about what happened in my job. Um, I um, uh, this is you know this is in, in gen so so they just really indicated this is um, not decision authority is not that uh, big in in my current practice, and uh, there's a few who have lots of it." So that is interesting. Um, okay, maybe. So here we go. As I said, um, I used this job this uh, job control model model and was interested in decision authority because uh, I said, look, witnessing trauma is like just something that happens so often because we now know that. I think it's like at least one third of women in you know in in any country who says they experience their own birth as traumatic, and then of those women in Australia we know it's about six percent who go on then and develop even post traumatic stress disorder. But these numbers just tell us that witnessing trauma is something that happens quite regular to midwives. So it's definitely something that we need to conceptualize as a form of occupational stress. And then uh, it's good to um, then the uh, demand control model, which explains occupational stress, is is a good one to understand what puts midwives at risk. So, what I um, my hypothesis was uh, that midwives who have um, so that that decision authority affects how midwives react to witnessing trauma, and um, it might even uh, make them less so low decision authority would make them more likely to be uh, to react with traumatic stress because as we saw in the model if you have um, low decision authority um, but high psychological demands you just kind of develop more stress so and this is what i found in my 
study. First thing, very interesting, um, I asked the midwives in the first, uh, when I inquired about uh, birth trauma, I asked, have you ever witnessed birth trauma? And then I asked them to think of one specific traumatic event that stood out for them. And then in relation to that, they answered the question about trauma symptoms and also about what type of birth trauma it was. So I made these categories, um, so obviously death, you know, like these, the big, these big dramatic ones, death, and then I had injury or threat of injury to mother and child. Uh, one category was abusive care management and witnessing disrespect. So what I was trying is to identify um, inter, uh, interpersonal trauma, that is trauma that has to do with what other people do to you, and trauma that is non-interpersonal. It's a bit like um, uh, uh, destiny. So if you don't think of birth, but in other trauma research is like natural catastrophes, they are non-interpersonal, but then uh, violence and abuse, that's interpersonal trauma. So I try to kind of think, okay, what constitutes interpersonal trauma for um, in birth and then, of course, abusive care management. So, okay, so this is how I came up with the categories of birth trauma. Interesting is that I found associations between what type of birth trauma the midwives witnessed and their decision authority at the time of the traumatic event, because that's how I asked the question. How much? So I asked them to answer these questions um, about their uh, how much say they had, how much uh, say they had in their working environment, and so on, um, in uh, with reference to the uh, birth, to the time when they were experiencing the birth trauma. So at the time of a traumatic event, how much um, say did you have over your job, and so on, and so on. So, um, so. On the uh, right hand side here, you see the odd ratios. So that's just um, an indication of um, how much more likely is the occurrence of an event. And that's here of uh, having low or high decision authority um, when the uh, birth trauma included uh, death injury or abusive care or interpersonal disrespect. So I just, um, so what it, what it tells us is that um, midwives who uh, witnessed um, a traumatic event that included abusive care or management. They were, um, um, no, sorry, the other way around. Midwives who um, had low decision authority were 2.6 two times more likely to have witnessed um, a traumatic event that included abusive care or management. Midwives that had low decision authority were 1.8 times more likely to witness a traumatic event that included interpersonal disrespect and 1.6 times more likely to witness injury. Midwives with low decision authority, um, that, that there was no relationships in regard to um, death. So, um, so death is clearly a non-interpersonal um, traumatic event. It's more like has to do with destiny, not that much with what uh, is what is what sort of care the woman is getting, what interventions are um, are happening uh, with the woman. So um, it's interesting to see that the category death, uh, witnessing death um, that midwives remembered, that, that didn't really matter in regards to low and high decision authority. So this is, I want to ask, you: do you have any questions? Do you understand what I want to say with this, um, why this, this matter, this analysis? So I'm going to move on um, to it. So, so basically what it shows is that um, when I ask midwives, just remember one event that really, you know, stood out for you that was, that was bad, that affected you. Um, midwives who had low decision authority or midwives who remembered an event that uh, a really bad event of abusive care and management, they also had low decision authority uh, at that time. So you can then argue that having low decision authority makes it more likely that you witness, for example, um, abusive care management or in general that you witness interpersonal trauma. Okay, maybe it becomes a bit clearer when I talk about um, uh, the relationship between decision authority and traumatic stress.
that's so so but yeah there's also so this was interesting there is a relationship with um decision authority and what type of birth trauma trauma midwives um recall as particular distressing interesting also um uh the um peri uh, traumatic emotions um they were so the, the peritraumatic emotions that's how you what you feel immediately um after the trauma so and that's a risk factor for traumatic stress um fear horror helplessness that's are the classic ones that uh, are asked when you make when you diagnose a post traumatic stress disorder but um i also um asked about anger powerlessness and guilt because in other studies about post traumatic stress uh, that has been identified as um affecting or that has been shown that midwives who witness trauma they often get very angry and also they experience powerlessness and they sometimes feel guilty um so what we see in this um what these uh, results show us is that um midwives who um recall horror reacting with horror so being absolutely horrified by what they watched and being deeply affected with this horror they were much more likely uh to have um low to have had low decision authority at the time of the traumatic event so about you know again i i um i expressed that in odds ratios or risk relative risk so the relative risk um for um horror there was a 2.68 time, times more again interesting too um so anger was more midwives who witnessed um who had low decision authority had more anger and more powerless feeling more sense of powerlessness when they witnessed trauma um and very interesting is that midwives with low decision authority also had significantly they had more feelings of responsibility and i thought this is really odd because as you notice by the questions per se um the concept of of decision authority expresses that you actually don't have that much say about what happens in to the woman whilst you uh, whilst uh, providing care because you're working in a model of care where you're not allowed to make too many decisions uh, autonomously because your professional autonomy as a midwife is reduced so interesting is so even midwives or particular when they have low decision authority they still feel responsible for what happened to the woman and that's uh yeah that is interesting i think my interpretation for me was that even if midwives work in settings where they are really um do not have a lot of say about how they do their work and settings that are probably not women centers they still have like a very strong sense um that their job is to be with the women and to um get the best outcome for the women so even though this is not possible and it's not the midwife's fault that it's not possible um she would still feel responsible for the outcome it kind of shows how midwives and women are connected very deeply how much midwives care about the women they they are um providing uh care during labor and birth to but um I thought it also uh, is a bit pro it shows also how um it must um be emotionally distressing for midwives for a midwife to be in a setting where you actually can't make some major decisions but you still feel such a sense of responsibility for the overall outcome so that does um yeah it just does does seem stressful there Do you have any thoughts about um that relationship here between so 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 basically what I'm saying midwives who have low decision authority don't have a lot of say about what's happening in the birth um in the birth management but they still feel a strong sense of responsibility when there when there is a traumatic event do you um does anybody want to comment on that or does that ring true for you for your own experiences maybe certainly rings true from every my experience i've ever had but can i also give you a 5 minute warning um julia oh, okay sure sure so yeah that's i think that is just something really interesting for midwives to think about so that you know they even yeah they just 
they just feel responsible for what happens to the, to the women and when something traumatic happens so that it just affects them that's because okay. the midwife considers the patient to be her woman whatever happens doesn't she yeah so there's always an emotional yeah. um connection there i think well in any, yeah, in any good mid, in Even any though, good midwife anyway yeah that is right so so the final thing so what i was looking then was so the the amount of post traumatic stress so that's what i measured with the um just the scale, uh, just the normal uh, trauma scale for for um, assessing post traumatic stress symptoms and decision authority, and the similar results are reflected. Midwives who had low decision authority, they um, had a higher risk of developing post traumatic stress disorder compared to midwives with um, high decision authority. So, if you want in a small scale. These findings confirm that the um, job demand, the, the control demand model, uh, does also work for midwives, because we see midwives can deal with can deal with stresses better when they have more decision authority, and with the stress of witnessing birth trauma, they can uh, deal much better when they have more decision authority. Important here is though, also you can also choose another angle to that. You could say, okay, maybe midwives who have high decision authority, maybe they just in the first place do not witness that much uh, gruesome traumatic events because as a result of them being able to manage the birth and to really um, uh, orchestrate the care in the way they want, maybe that is actually protects women from trauma. And when women are protected when women are experiencing uh, no birth trauma, of course, the midwife is not witnessing it. So I think it could be a two-way relationship that really, um, in the end, it is certainly also good for women to have midwives who have lots of decision authority, who kind of manage the birth, have, have this authority, because it might actually also prevent uh, traumatic um, birth events uh, from happening. So particularly the sort of trauma that has to do, that um, is related with... Um, or that is man-made, like uh, trauma through um, unsensitive vaginal examinations or trauma through uh, just rough uh, approaches by um, obstetricians or maybe other um, fellow midwives could be too. So, But when the midwife has really a lot of say about how she looks after that woman, um, that might really just make the whole birth um, better. For the women, in in that sense, uh, of course, where we know there's better outcomes associated with one-to-one -one midwifery care, but also one one outcome might be that the woman really is less likely to experience birth trauma. That's a very interesting um, consideration. I think in future, when we look at models of care, um, we should assess birth trauma too and say, okay, what is what is the birth trauma aspect um, of this model of care? Does it affect how much uh, the likelihood for women to be traumatized in birth? Okay, so I have to rush through it now since I not have too much time. But I, I already said so. There might there's definitely research needs needs to be done about the exact relationship about professional autonomy and um, occupational stress in midwives. But I think my findings show that there is a relationship that midwives who have more professional autonomy have. Um, are less likely to uh, experience traumatic stress. And um, one way this might uh, be uh, affected is that midwives actually um, with low decision authority are more likely to witness care-related birth trauma because they are not don't have the power to really um, stop, uh, let's say, disrespectful care or abusive care. And as a result of having to witness that sort of birth trauma, they have more peritraumatic distress. This is the emotions of horror, anger, feeling helplessness, feeling responsible. And we know that peritraumatic distress, distress is just a very um, important uh, risk factor for post-traumatic stress disorder. So as a result of this chain, uh, low professional autonomy in midwives um, leads to post-traumatic stress symptoms. Okay, so this is the end of this presentation. As I said, um, important uh, points that have uh, that has have been uh, shown um, through the findings of my research are that professional autonomy influences midwives' health and well-being. Um, 
there is a chance through job redesign, and that means just change in model of care, to increase professional autonomy in midwives. And um, whilst this, whilst we have lots of uh, findings how this might really be advantages, uh, bring lots of advantages for women, um, job redesign to increase professional autonomy may also uh, bring health benefits for midwives, and it may reduce, for example, traumatic stress symptoms in midwives. Um, a problem in this area is that uh, professional autonomy has not been uh, measured a lot and has not been, uh, and because we don't have really solid model to measure it, um, it's hard for us as midwives to discuss what means professional auto autonomy in different settings. And my presentation is a step forward to really say, okay, there is the concept of decision authority. It has been used in many other settings. It gives us an, a clear indication about level of professional autonomy. Let's try and use that concept. Let's ask the midwives about their decision authority and let's investigate how that affects birth outcomes in women and how it affects midwives. Okay. So, oopsie. That is, uh, was a summary of my presentation, and I would really be interested to hear some of your uh, thoughts about that. So, in general, whether it rings true that you see in your um, when you in your professional life that you see that r relationship between professional um, between decision authority or professional autonomy and workplace, you can that rings true for your mid midwifery work experiences. And um, yeah, so so maybe we start with that. Thank you, Julia. Did you have another um, poll that you wanted to run? Uh, yeah, there was uh, one other poll that was um, uh, when I talked about the different forms of birth trauma. Maybe you can we can run that quickly. So, have you ever witnessed uh, disrespectful and abusive care? I think that was my. Uh, I would just go. be interested in that because lots of what I've been talking about is. Um, Okay, when midwives have lots of decision authority, it's less likely that they witness uh, disrespectful or abusive care. Um, but before this, is really important to see. Okay, um, is this a common occurrence? Do midwives really witness witness that a lot? So I have fourteen people answering. Um, maybe there's some more. I would I would like to know. I would like to know if there's anybody who has who said he's never never witnessed disrespectful care. That would be really great to see. I've added lots in the, in the chat box because um, my answer would be 100% and lots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, again, that also needs some more investigation. I think that that's 100%. Look, even though we've only yeah. had 18 to date, some people are not midwives, of course, so... Um, yeah, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Anybody else want to add to it? Anybody going to put in a no? Only if it's true. Only if it's true, yeah. <laughs> oh, 20, see, the numbers are going up. Well, people, yeah. can ask, people can actually ask their questions. Let's see what the chat box, we've got uh, five minutes only. So what kind of questions have come up? Um, somebody asked at one point. Where can I see the questions, Linda? Or? Well, the, it's in. They're in the chat box. I'm just on a little look. Um, some one person, Marquita, has said, "Can we interpret that the low DA um, midwives are a bit on the side of the traumatized woman?" I think that answer would be yes. Um, they are on the side of the traumatized women. Yeah, would we would we be empathetic with the woman who's been tra traumatized and therefore um, uh, more? Would we be more? empathetic with women who are traumatized if we don't have any decision making authority. I think your research um, yes. that's a good that's a good that's an interesting question. Um, I think um, also midwives who have high decision authority um, would have would be empathetic with the women, but maybe they would be more in a position to prevent certain uh, certain forms of trauma. So but so and yes if you can't prevent Certain uh, certain trauma like uh, disrespectful care, then certainly as a midwife with low decision authority, you are very much um, with the woman. You are you know you are, you are uh, um, identifying with her even probably. That's my interpretation of it. 
And Marquette has also commented that if a woman decides what she wants and the staff are trying to follow the women's wishes, but this doesn't happen, then the staff are likely to be more traumatized. At least I think that's what she meant. Yeah, can you can you repeat if the woman... It's at the bottom of... Uh, Marquette has said if a woman decides what she wants and then the staff following the women's decision, um, that it, it can't be... A, a, the decision can't be followed for some reason, then the staff are more likely to be traumatized because... Um, they're not following the women's wishes. Yeah, they might have feelings of guilt, and um, we know also that guilt the same way, <clears throat> guilt and horror. And so when you feel guilt and horror when the trauma occurs, you are more likely then to develop symptoms of post-traumatic stress because, yeah, that's that's just a very uh, established relationship. So that's tr that's very likely to be true. Yeah, Marquita has put another good point actually. Um, being a devil's advocate, maybe the high DA midwives who are experiencing less pers uh, abuse because they may feel less sensitive. I suppose. Are you saying, Marquita, that um, if a woman, if a midwife has a lot of responsibility but she's become kind of hardened over time um, with that responsibility, she's less likely to be stressed if a woman is traumatized? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, I would like to get yes. a clarified too. Why? So, but why would midwives um, who have high decision authority, why would they be less sensitive? I too would um, would personally think that was unlikely because people who have responsibility generally um, have more um, more invested in the whole interest but maybe i'm thinking of independent midwife type people rather than yeah that's um, what i'm thinking too yeah. what is makita what is makita saying can i see her it's it's the bottom of the chat box there the last few comments uh, i can't see that so just about anyway, but, uh -huh. are you in the everyone part of the chat box yes of course you are no i'm not uh now i am yes <laughs> okay yeah. See all those bits at the bottom there? Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if you don't identify with the woman that much, so you don't get so you don't don't get hurt that much. That's um I I get that point, but I think still um if you are having a lot of decision authority, you can still identify with the women. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you there, but there are a few midwives. I'm sure we've all met them who have that responsibility and that decision-making ability, but they, um, they, are, they are being hardened or they're different types of people. Um, and actually, they're the ones that often um, administer some of that um, disrespectful care. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, it's really a big topic, I think, disrespectful care in maternity. And um, I think, you know, uh, there's lots of reasons for why it happens. Um, but I also think that midwives in general have a very strong uh, instinct, I'll almost say, to protect the women. And if have if women have um, if midwife have um, decision authority, if they have professional autonomy to manage the birth, I think uh, per se they would manage the birth in a way that is not traumatizing the women. Well, would that, so. but that they can only do when they have really um, have that authority in decision making in the yeah. model of care they are working. So it's really about models of care. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can do an awful lot about the hardened midwife that I was describing just now, but what we can do probably is more to do with the ones who don't have that responsibility. Yeah. We can um, yeah. we can support those people and maybe give them more responsibility or ensure by uh, protocols and disciplinaries and things that disrespectful care is what is stopped, yeah. which is very hard to I just do. Read I just read the comment from um, Margaret Jovic, and yeah, that's right. The uh, the model does the model of care um, encourage or discourage a close relationship between midwife and woman. That's of course important too, because I see what you mean. You might have you have this midwife who's very much the manager type, having maybe a lot of say, but then really does not have that close relationship with the woman. So um, ideally, we would have a model where we have one-to-one -one care and the, the midwife uh, can afford to uh, enter like a close relationship where she identifies with the woman, but still she has uh, decision-making authority about how the birth is managed. Yes, I agree.
Anyway, we've run out of time now, Julia. So if you wanted to give um, everybody, anybody, your contact um, details, if you wish, um, so that they can continue this discussion elsewhere, you are very welcome. But meantime, I'm afraid we will have to move on to the next session to allow time to change the room over. So thank you very much indeed, Julia, for um, this very interesting study. And we hope to hear more about it. Yes, yes, I will certainly get it out as soon as I've finished written, writing it up. So thank you everybody very much for your attention. I hope, I hope I could give you some basic ideas about just the concept of decision authority and how it may affect how midwives react to trauma. Thank you. Thank you right, very so much. I'll just need to move on to the final slides. Facilitator, remember to turn off record. I will do that. Just 